It's another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily, episode 1239, and I'm Dr. Neil Malik. Hey there, happy Friday, and welcome to another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily, where I answer your health questions related to fitness, diet and nutrition, and lots more. You send me the questions, and I answer them for you. Now, if you want to know a little bit more about me and my credentials and my background, definitely listen to one of the other Friday Q&A episodes where I talk about my credentials and background in more detail. So I'm gonna skip that part for now. But instead, I do wanna mention that today's question is a perfect complement to a question I answered about two weeks ago. There was a question about sunscreens and how effective they are. Well, this question definitely relates because we're gonna talk about the safety of sunscreens and moisturizers and whether the chemicals found in these products are potentially harmful. Now, you may be wondering, It's winter here in the Northern Hemisphere. Why am I talking about sunscreen? Well, like I said two weeks ago, anytime you're out in the sun, even on a cloudy day, you're gonna wanna be wearing sunscreen. And yes, that means even in the wintertime. So I promise you'll find this episode helpful. And with that, let's get right to today's question as we optimize your life. Hi. I'm a menopausal woman who has lived in Florida most of my life. I know sunscreen and moisturizers are extremely important, but I worry about using the right brands. I've heard the FDA doesn't regulate topical products much, and the labels are impossible to understand. I don't want to do more harm than good when I apply skincare products. What do you recommend? Thanks in advance for your help. Thank you so much for your question, Amy. We know that certain chemicals can be absorbed through the skin. We're learning more and more about which chemicals are more likely to be absorbed and in what forms every day. Now, since sunscreen is applied directly to the skin, duh, we want to be sure that any chemicals found in these sunscreens aren't going to cause us harm. Now, sunscreen comes in many forms. It can be applied as a lotion, a cream, or sprayed on. But something I didn't talk about before was that there are different categories of sunscreen. There are chemical sunscreens and physical sunscreens. Chemical sunscreens typically contain these fancy-sounding chemical compounds like oxybenzone, avobenzone, octocrylene, and ecamsole. What's unique about these specific chemicals is that they're great at absorbing harmful ultraviolet rays, often referred to as UV rays. Now, I went into more detail about UV rays and their effects on our skin about two weeks ago, so I'm gonna move on from here. When it comes to physical sunscreens, they're actually made up of something else. They're often made up of zinc or titanium dioxide. And instead of absorbing UV light, these compounds reflect it. Either way, both effectively protect the skin from these harmful UV rays. Oh, and as a side note, this is why we don't use the term sunblock anymore. Since these products don't block the sun's UV rays, but rather absorb or reflect those rays, the term sunscreen is more accurate. All right, now the important thing to remember when using physical sunscreens, the ones that contain zinc or titanium dioxide, is that they need to be visible on the skin. Both zinc and titanium dioxide should appear white when applied to the skin. You've probably seen this before, but if you need a visual, think back to the 80s and the movie Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Remember Sean Penn's character, Jeff Spicoli, in some of those beach scenes? On his nose, he was sporting that white physical sunscreen. Now for this character, it seemed like that clearly visible physical sunscreen was a badge of honor. But in reality, many of us don't want the world to know we're wearing sunscreen. We don't want that large white stripe running down our noses. That's why chemical sunscreens are often preferred. They don't leave that white residue on the skin. Now you are correct, Amy, that here in the States, the Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, is supposed to regulate the safety of ingredients found in sunscreens, but they've been a bit lax on this. More recently, the FDA has come under scrutiny for being a little less vigilant about the safety of chemical sunscreens. So, as a result, they're asking sunscreen manufacturers to provide more safety data about their products. But for now, the Harvard School of Public Health and the FDA and the American Dermatology Association of America say that there is no relationship between the chemicals commonly found in these products and any negative health effects. But they all agree that more studies would be helpful. There are, however, 
two ingredients that are not recognized as safe. These include para-aminobenzoic acid, also known as PABA, and tolamine salicylate. But you can rest easy because products that contain either of these two chemicals are no longer sold in the US. Now, when it comes to moisturizers, we likely only need to concern ourselves with one chemical ingredient, phthalates. Phthalates are added to products that act as skin softeners and moisturizers. But phthalates aren't just found in self-care products. They're basically everywhere. They're often used to preserve food and even found in our food packaging. It's for this reason that back in 1999, the European Union restricted the use of six different types of phthalates. So the question now is, how much exposure to phthalates is too much exposure? Sadly, we don't know. This is why many toxicologists will advise us that we limit our exposure just in case. So to be on the safe side, go ahead and purchase phthalate-free moisturizers. Most products will clearly state they're phthalate-free right on the packaging. Okay, so where are we with all of this? The bottom lines are, when it comes to sunscreen, those that are sold in the marketplace are likely safe. But to see if anything changes, stay current with the latest safety announcements from the FDA as they collect more data from sunscreen manufacturers. Regarding moisturizers, try and avoid those that contain phthalates. Luckily, there are quite a few phthalate-free options available for purchase. And thank you to FitTrack. We're in 2021 now, and my plan is to focus on consistency. Thanks to FitTrack, I can get in-depth insights on my fitness progress and reach goals faster. The Dara Smart Scale measures 17 vital health metrics, so I get personalized insights and a clearer picture of my overall health. Plus, it hones in on my unique body type and gives me the information I need to get the results I want all in one place because it syncs with the free FitTrack app. With all the different metrics, this is completely different than any other scale I've used. And I love how easy it's been to use. Stop measuring weight and start measuring health with FitTrack. Go to getfittrack.com slash OHD to take 50% off your order. Plus, for a limited time, you'll also save an additional 10%. That's G-E-T-F-I-T-T-R-A-C-K dot com slash O-H-D to save 50% plus get an additional 10% off your order. Don't miss out on this amazing limited time offer. Getfittrack.com slash O-H-D. And thank you so much again for the question, Amy. You'll be entered into a very small raffle every month to win a book. And if you wanna be in the raffle, send me a question you can email one to health at oldpodcast.com. Or if you want your voice played on the show, come by oldpodcast.com slash ask. Right on that page, you can record straight from your computer's microphone. It's really easy and you can even play back your message and do retakes before sending it in. Or you can do it the old-fashioned way and call in your question. The number is 61 I love ohd All right, that's another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily. Thank you so much for listening every day. Thank you for listening all the way through. I hope you have a wonderful start to your holiday weekend if you're in the States, and I'll see you back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.